Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about another exogenous pathogen, the coldness. The coldness, from the definition, you can see it refers to the factors that have the characteristics of cold and construction. So coldness is actually refers to it. It is very close related to the temperature and the cold when you go back to the the table of the five elements the coldness also related to the winter so the coldness is the dominant climate or the dominant factors in winter if in winter it's too it's too cold then this coldness this weather can become the pathogen and cause diseases then we call them we call it the exogenous pathogen so the coldness is more likely to happen in winter but it also can happen in the other seasons this is very similar to the wind the wind is related is related to the spring it is more likely to happen in spring, but also can happen in the other seasons. Coldness can happen in either in winter or even in summer. That's similar to the example we mentioned before, that's in, especially in Joburg. In, in summer, in very hot day, and then all of a sudden, there, there's a hailstorm and then in the evening become very cold so in this condition people also can be affected by the coldness in abnormal climate or dramatic changes in the in the weather or even in summer when when it is raining and then it will under the rain and then in this condition you also can be affected by the coldness and more commonly what happens nowadays is the air condition so in summer normally it's quite hot and then when you enter a room with air conditioners you enter a room with an air condition and then this coldness, this artificial coldness, also can co can cause diseases. These are all the causes, all the possible causes of the exogenous pathogen coldness. There are some characteristics of coldness. Coldness is an in pathogen and consumes yang or yang qi of the body so this means that the cold in compared with cold and hot hot is yang cold is in so the in pathogen is more likely to consume the yang qi of the body so if someone they don't have enough or they always lack of yang qi they are more likely to be attacked by the coldness And then when the coldness attack, attacks our body, if the body constitution is very strong, so in other ways the defensive qi is very strong, and then in this situation, your defensive qi can fight with the coldness, and thus the coldness can freeze your your superficial. And then cause the objection. Objection, they cause the objection of superficial, and then this will result in excess coldness syndrome. If your defensive qi is weak or your yang qi is weak, and then in this condition, you can develop into a deficiency cold syndrome. So what does it mean by excess cold syndrome or deficiency cold syndrome? 
we're going to introduce now and also we're going to study in our diagnostic more in details for the excess cold syndromes the reason of this syndrome is because that's the defensive chi is very strong and then it fights with the pathogen coldness in our superficial skin and then it will cause aversion to cold fever no sweat and nasal congestion or runny nose we see from here from this syndrome it's very important that there's no sweat no sweat is also a kind of characteristics of coldness as you can see from the third characteristics coldness is characterized by congestion congestion it can refer to the muscle congestion which is similar to the sparrow it also can cause the congestion of the skin which the the pores on skin clothes as due to the coldness this is actually very obvious phenomenon in the in our physical physiological condition for instance if the, the weather is very cold and you feel cold you can see your skin the pores of your skin clothes that's that's why in this condition for excess cold syndrome the patient we have no sweat and for the deficiency cold syndrome the, the patient may have sweat and also the coldness sometimes can attack the internal organs directly that's because of this kind of patient the lack of a yang qi the lack of the defensive qi in superficial so the coldness can attack the yang in the body which yang in the body that's the spin yang or heart or kidney yang so in this condition if a patient suffer from abdominal pain vomiting or even diarrhea and they from the tongue you can see a pale tongue or white coating though in this condition we can conclude that the patient are attacked by the coldness it's especially if these symptoms can be relieved by applying a hot bottle in the abdomen or if some in some women if they suffer from the dysmenorrhea and then this this dysmenorrhea can be relieved by a hot bottle applying in the abdominal area and then this also due to the coldness but here these these two kinds of coldness are different the first one we mentioned is external coldness the second one from the semenaria is internal coldness so the coldness is here we talk about as the six exogenous factors that are the external coldness that's the coldness from the environment from the nature And also from the five elements you can see the coldness is related to winter and then the winter related to the, the water also related to the kidney so when the coldness attack our our body it is also more likely to attack the kidney so in this condition if they the coldness attack the kidney the patient will have sometimes they have frequent urination or very clear urine so the color of the urine is clear patient also can feel aversion to cold and then also cold feeling at the low back or knees why low back or 
needs. That's because from the Zhangfu series, it's just the low back or the waist and knees are the mansion of the kidney or at the house of the kidney. So that's why if the kidney coldness, you know, if, if they can have blood in these areas, the patient also may have edema due to the coldness. Because if someone they have coldness in the body, in, in other words, that's the in pathogen can consume the yang qi of the body. In other words, this, this patient is lack of yang qi. So if you got excess in, then you will have deficiency yang. So you need to think about these two aspects. The second is the coldness is characterized by objection and accompanied by pain. So pain very important for coldness. Whenever there's a pain, there's a blockage. But what causes the blockage? Coldness is one of the common reason of the obstruction. Because the coldness in the body, when the, the, the body is attacked by the coldness, it's a very similar the situation. If you imagine you put the, our body, or you put a person in a fridge, or even in a freezer, then you can imagine that the circulation of that person, or the circulation will be everything slowed down, right? If you put them in a freezer, and then even the circulation, some circulation stopped. Once the circulation stops, cause the obstruction and then the obstruction will block the flow of qi and blood and then in this condition the patient will feel numbness or pain so in order to circulate well of the of qi and blood what we need in our body is yang qi so we need the, the warm qi, with the yang qi which is so warm, which is warm, and then the coldness is the opposite side of warm. So this kind of pain also can characterize by the how to alleviate pain. The camp can be relieved by applying heat. So in a warm situation or in a warm warmer environment the pain can be relieved or in other words the pain can be aggravated by cold weather or cold environment so if the environment or the weather become cold the pain become worse that sometimes we happen in people with strong joint pain or in some arthritis. In winter, they become worse. In summer, they become better. And then if they have this very apparent symptoms, then we can conclude that this person, this patient is attacked by the cold, the coldness. Depends on where the coldness is, it can cause obstruction to different areas, so it can cause different pains. For instance, if the coldness obstructs the stomach qi, it can cause a stomach ache. If the coldness obstructs the, the flow, the circulation in the joints, it can cause joint pain. So that's the the pain is one of the most important symptoms of coldness. The last aspect is construction. Construction 
it can be spectrum or it also can be just the feeding from the patient so sometimes in some in some cases the patient can tell you for instance if the patient feel the pain in the legs and also sometimes the, sometimes the patient can tell you that they feel they feel like that one of the leg is shorter than the other one but when you see from the legs it might be shorter or might be normal but from the patient from the patient's feeling they feel that the the leg is slightly shorter than the other one but what causes this kind of feeling that's the coldness because the coldness can construct the muscle that's why they can feel this this kind they can have this kind of feeling and the construction exactly what we said previously can congest our superficial skin which causes no sweat and the, when the congestion happens in the pulse it can cause the tense pulse and also this kind of patient they feel cold so they will stay in the corner they close in the corner it's all because of the all because of the coldness so the coldness is in pathogen it can consume yang qi it can direct invade in the body surface or the stomach in that time uterus heart and or kidney objection this objection will accompanied by pain because the objection will cause blockage and then wherever there's blockage there's a pain so once there's blockage it means that there's no there's not enough nutrition supply and then it will cause the pain constructions Contraction will cause closing pulse, sparrow, congestion of tendons and impairment of circulation, qi and blood. So that's the contraction. This, the next column, you can see different symptoms there. These symptoms we're going to mention again. We're going to focus on these symptoms from the diagnostics. But you, it's good to know some of the symptoms here. As you can see, why the patient will have lack of sweating, why there's no sweat, that's of the because of the contraction. And the contraction and the coldness can cause lots of different symptoms. And you can see from these, they mainly focus on. The symptoms of pain and this kind of pain can be alleviated by warm warm environments so that's why for some dysmenorrhea or some stomach ache we can use a hot bottle to apply in the abdominal area and then the patient can feel relief then this in also in other other way to confirm that the pathogen of this condition is the coldness. So the next the softness pathogens we're going to talk about is the summer heat. Summer heat it refers to the factors that happens in late summer and have the characteristics of heat and the trend of moving upwards and the dampness so from the definition you will see this summer heat it happens in late summer so this is the only one pathogen that have the specific season requirements so if the similar symptoms or happens in the other seasons we don't call we don't call them summer heat the summer heat it has to happen in late summer. We're going to explain what what's the late summer. And then the characteristics of 
summer heat is this the this kinds of pathogen have the characteristics of heat and also the trend of moving upwards and dampness so you can see from here this kind this pathogen if you have all these three characteristics of heat and moving up and dampness that's why the patient may feel headache and this kind of headache is also very different from the headache due to the coldness you're going to explain what the differences of the this kind of headache as well so the first question here we're going to explain is late summer what's late summer late summer actually refers to the in summer in the later of in the three months of summer and then at the at the end of the summer at also the early of autumn so this period we call we call the late summer so summer heat happens in late summer what's special in late summer that's the climate especially in china and also in, in china, johannesburg also quite similar when summer ends the, at the beginning of autumn while the weather still very hot but also it rains a lot still in our rain season so it's very hot weather and then it rains a lot so here we got two pathogens one is the heat which is of the hot weather from the hot weather and the rain that's from the dampness so from these two that's the characteristics of late summer and late summer also related to the spring sorry related to the spring so this kind of pathogen is very easy to attack our spleen called the digestive function problem so in this condition apart from the climate in late summer patient work in a very hot condition such as mining they work underground very hot and sometimes humans this kind of condition they also can suffer from some summer heat but in this situation we don't call summer heat summer heat has to refer to late summer in the other seasons when they have the heat and dampness then we can call them due to the damp heat the second question here is the headache the summer heat has the trend of moving upwards so this pathogen attacks our body they can move on top of we can move on top of our our body so you have the chance to move upwards and this kind of moving upwards it can cause headache but this kind of headache is different from the coldness if the, if the headache is called is caused by the coldness this kind of headache can be relieved by warm temperature and this kind of headache from summer heat depends on which is dominant either the heat or dampness so this summer heat it has two different situations one is the heat the other one is dampness so from the heat in the later slides you will see what's the characteristic of heat if the heat is dominant this summer this headache can be severe headache can be distending feeling and if the dampness is dominant in the summer heat so this kind of headache 
can be a kind of a he very heavy feeding in the head. So that's the characteristics of one of the characteristics of summer heat. On the definition, most important is a season. It has to happen in, in this season. We actually have the dates, but these dates are according to the northern calendar. So just in general, what you need to remember is that it happens in the, at the end of the summer, at the beginning of autumn. Let's see the first characteristics. Summer heat is a young pathogen, and it's character, character, characterized by extreme heat. So this heat, this summer heat, is very hot. Very hot, extreme heat in in the in our symptoms in the body. It can happen like high fever or irritation or red redness in the face. And also from the pulse, we can feel very forceful pulse. This all indicates the summer heat. The second, the summer heat is also characterized by rising and dispersing actions and consuming of qi and body fluid. Summer heat is a yang pathogen. The yang pathogen can consume the body fluid. But also, why it consumes the body fluid? The summer heat has the heat and dampness. Dampness is in pathogen. So this is, this pathogen has both yin and yang factors. But why we say that it's consuming qi and, and body fluids? That's because the the pathogen, the summer heat, have the characteristic of moving upwards and dispersing. So it can move something up that causes something some symptoms in the head. Also the upper part of the body, which is our heart, it also can cause irritation. It can cause vertical, it can cause rise red faces and the dispersing action. The dispersing actions can cause sweat. So this kind of situation, the patient will have sweat. So this patient, when you feel, when you touch their skin, when you shake their hands or when you feel their arms, you can feel a kind of moist or coldness. Patients suffer from coldness when you touch their skin. Cold and dry. So for summer heat, when you touch the skin, you can feel a kind of moist, humid, that kind of feeling from the skin. That's because of the characteristic of dispersing actions. And these actions actually, what they disperse is the body fluid. So the body fluid is supposed to stay inside of the body. And then because of the summer heat, they disperse on the top of the skin. And the body actually is losing the body fluid. So summer heat will cause lack of body fluids, which is consuming body fluids, consuming qi. Why the summer heat can consume the qi? That's actually the results of consuming body fluids. Because from the relationship between the body fluids and qi, if you don't remember, you need to go back to the previous theories. That's when we discuss about the axons, qi, blood, and body fluids. What's the relationship between the body fluids and the qi? Body fluids is also the carrier of qi. So if the person is losing body fluids, also in the meantime, the qi is losing from the body fluids. That's why 
in this situation, the patient will have the symptom, the symptoms of lacking qi and body fluids. Go further. So the symptoms might happen of lacking of qi. So this patient they feel fatigue. They feel very tired. They don't want to move. And for body fluids, the patient may feel thirsty, but sometimes the, this kind of patient they don't want to drink water. The patient also may have constipation. This is because of the no body fluids in the intestines. Or the patient also may have less urine. urine or darker color in the urine. That's all because of the lack of body fluids. If this pathogen attack the heart, which is from the chance of moving outwards, the patient also may be unconscious. The summer heat, the third characteristic is the summer heat is frequently combined with pathogenic damp or dampness. For well, these characteristics, it's actually from also from the definition, dampness is actually in within summer heat. For so summer heat, they have to. They have to have this kind of characteristics. And then there's also another reason for the dampness. That's because in this situation, in late summer and early autumn, that's where that's when the the climate, the weather rains a lot. So in this condition, in the environments there's a lot of summer heat, a lot of dampness, and these dampness are going to affect our body and also going to affect our, our ourselves because we live in the, these kind this kinds of environments. So this kind of patient we have the symptoms of dampness, which can be apart from the heat symptoms which are fever or thirsty, the patient of course can feel a pressed chest, nausea or vomiting, or loose stool or sticky stool, the kind of feeling, and fatigue. These are all different symptoms of dampness. Summer heat is in late summer, although it is in late summer, we also still in summer. So that's related to the heart. That's why it can block the heart. Also because of the change of moving outwards. So it can block the heart cause unconsciousness. So these are the characteristics of summer heat. Young pathogen moving outward, dispersing actions combined with dampness.